Hi, I'm Dr. Arthur Bradley, and today I'm going to test the shielding effectiveness of Mylar blankets. So I picked up a bag of them, and these are very typical uh, aluminum Mylar blankets. So the way they're made is they have a polyester film, and then they, uh, they use a vapor deposited aluminum onto it. And they do great for reflecting heat, such as to keep you warm in an emergency or after sporting events, that sort of thing. They were actually invented by NASA back in the 1960s, is my understanding. So anyway, what we want to know is how well do they shield against RF energy, in particular against an electromagnetic pulse attack. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a Mylar blanket and wrap up a large crate with it. I've done this before with aluminum foil. And then I'll place a spectrum analyzer inside to measure what field levels are seen in there. And that will let us determine what the shielding effectiveness is of a material like this. All right, so stay tuned. We'll go ahead and set up the experiment and then we'll draw our conclusions. So what I went ahead and did was wrap up the outside of this uh, crate with one of these space blankets. Um, I left the very inside of it, as you'll see, I'll scoot you a little closer, uncovered, but I did wrap it around the, the insides, uh, all four faces of the inside. And then what I'll do is I'll use a second blanket to uh, create a cover to go over the top that I can peel back uh, during my testing. And so it'll end up being essentially a Faraday cage created out of a space blanket. And we'll see how well it shields. Okay, so just to remind you what my measurement system is, basically what I do is I use a, a signal generator uh, connected up to a wideband amplifier, which then uh, drives a wideband antenna. So that drives out the RF signal and I receive it over here on a portable spectrum analyzer. So what I'll do first is take some uh, open air measurements just sort of as a baseline, and then I'll put the spectrum analyzer inside of the Faraday cage, in this case, a mylar wrapped box, and we'll see how much the signal drops inside of that Faraday cage. That'll give us a measure of what the shielding effectiveness is at various frequencies. All right, we'll go ahead and get started. So the first thing we'll do is we'll take a couple of open air measurements uh, the first frequency I'm going to do it at is 100 megahertz. So basically what we've done is set up the antenna, broadcast the energy over toward the spectrum analyzer. And it looks like we have a level of minus 58 dBm. So our open air value will be minus 58 dBm. And then we'll compare that to what the value is once we put the spectrum analyzer inside of the, the uh, shielded box to see what kind of shielding effectiveness we get. So this just shows the spectrum analyzer sitting inside of the, the box all wrapped up. Now what I'll do is I'll take a second blanket and I'll cover the face of it and tape it down real well. And then we'll see what the value ends up being. Okay, so I've gone ahead and placed the spectrum analyzer inside. I uh, used a second mylar blanket to create a, a cover for it. So it's sealed up, should be a good RF protection here. So let's go ahead and see how well it does. I'll go ahead and turn on the generator. All right, so the energy now is transmitting uh, over to the spectrum analyzer through the shielding. I'll go ahead and turn it back off. All right, and then we'll open up the, uh, the blanket here and we'll see what levels actually received at the spectrum analyzer. Now remember, our open air measurement was somewhere around minus 58 or minus 59 dBm. Let's see what we get. All right. Well, there's still quite a bit of signal there. Uh, looks like it's about minus 66 dBm. So, you know, even if we're being generous, we'd say that gave about 8 dB of shielding, uh, which, is, which is not great. A good aluminum box might give, you know, at this frequency, 40, 50 dB easy of shielding. So 8 dB is, uh, is not very good. So at least at 100 megahertz, it certainly does not appear that the Mylar blanket does a very good job. Let's test one other frequency to see how it does. Uh, we'll go ahead and turn up to 500 megahertz and we'll repeat the experiment. So I've turned up the generator to 500 megahertz. Um, it's not currently on yet. You can see there's no signal there at the spectrum analyzer. Let me go ahead and turn on the generator. All right, so you see the, the energy spike up there. And our open air measurement right there at the peak is going to be very close to minus 25 dBm. All right, so we'll, we'll just go ahead and round it off and say minus 25 dBm. And that will be our open air measurement that we're going to try and compare against when we put the spectrum analyzer inside the box. So I've wrapped up the box a second time. Uh, we're going to do it, go ahead and do the 500 megahertz measurement. So I'll turn on the generator. We'll let it run for just a few seconds so the spectrum analyzer can capture the energy. 
and we'll turn it back off and it will capture the peak level that it saw when the generator was on. All right, so let me go ahead and unwrap it. We'll see what it looks like. All right, so if we zoom in here, it looks like the, the peak level is somewhere right around maybe minus 35 uh, dBm or so. So we've picked up about, again, very similar to the 100 megahertz. We're picking up about eight to 10 dB of shielding uh, in these hundreds of megahertz kind of frequencies. So that's not very good. Um, so I would have to say that you know, in terms of whether or not a, a mylar space blanket would do a good job protecting from an electromagnetic pulse, I would say no. I would say it's not a very good shielding material. Certainly regular aluminum foil would do a better job. So just all in all, I would say this isn't the right product for protecting from an EMP attack. Well, we finished our experiments. We took a look at uh, how the mylar blanket performed at two different frequencies, 100 megahertz and 500 megahertz. And the results were basically the same. It, it offered about 8 dB of shielding, which is really pretty poor. Uh, really any other kind of shielded enclosure that you make any effort at would do a better job than that. So, uh, and the reason I believe it is, is that the, the material, this mylar blanket material, the metal is just so thin that the RF energy is able to pass through it with minimal loss. So my recommendation would be not to use mylar blankets for protecting against an EMP. They just don't offer enough shielding. There are many other options, including things like galvanized garbage cans or ammo cans, or even just aluminum foil wrapped boxes will also do a very good job. All right, so if you want to know more about shielding or any other type of EMP protective products, go to disasterprepare.com.